A northern group, the Arawa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership, has told the federal government to choose between dialoguing with them or allowing them return to the streets for the ongoing nationwide hunger protest. Now, the group said it is ready to dialogue with the federal government, asking that it initiates the process or will be left with no option than to return back to the streets. The spokesperson for the group, uh, Abdul Dambature, who is one of the organizers of the protest, lated this in a statement shortly after giving more insight into the protest and its suspension. Well, joining me on the program at this time is Emmanuel Bagudu, a New Central's correspondent. Uh, he joins from Kaduna State, after which, of course, uh, we'll bring in uh, Andul Dan Bature, the spokesperson for the Arawa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership, and also Victor Ani Laju, former presidential candidate of the NNPP. Gentlemen, thank you for joining. All right. Uh, You're Emmanuel. welcome. Thank you. Great. You're let, welcome. Thanks for having me. Great. But, let, uh, let, let uh, me point, point, of, point of production, uh, I'm the president of Arewa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership, not, not uh, the spokesperson. Okay, we, we apologize for, for that uh, mix-up. But uh, let me start off with our correspondent, Emmanuel Bagudu, for an update on the latest uh, in Kaduna State. I'm just coming back from Zaria this evening. I uh, I stopped at uh, Gaskiada Magaji in Wusasa. And of course, um, Normalcy have returned to Zaria. The, just like we reported yesterday, Normalcy have returned to back to Kaduna. So Normalcy have returned to Zaria. Uh, residents in Zaria have, have come, come back to their businesses. Uh, we saw them, you know, throwing the mosque this evening, this afternoon. They went to pray and, you know, all issues all issues has to do with tension is now calm but there are lots of there are lots of uh, you know you know effects of that clash that happened between soldiers security officials and the residents of zaria so but normalcy have returned even though it been restricted between uh 6 p.m to 8 a.m in the morning of course uh the residents have no choice but to adapt to the reality the new reality in kaduna state all right, now talking about uh, the curfew, any idea for how long this would uh, continue? Yes, uh, the only idea we have right now is the fact that uh, tomorrow is the last day of the end bad governance, uh, hashtag end bad governance protest. And of course, it is expected that after tomorrow, day 10, of course, this restriction of movement will be relaxed. But of course, I think uh, maybe after tomorrow, the government will also do an inspection then to ascertain whether it's going to relax the restriction of movement or not. So I think, let's say between Monday and Tuesday next week, uh, they should go back to, Kaduna and Zaria should go back to their normal way of lives. Uh, okay, now can you just also give us a feel uh, you know, of what exactly the pulse is on the street for young people? Um, are they calm? Are they, uh, have they come to the reality that, look, um, Let's, let's talk with the government or are there still, you know, agitations to go back to the street and further press their demands? Yes, they are. In fact, both, both the youth in Kaduna and Zaria are actually on standby for protest. Uh, you know, today in Zaria, a lot of youth that I've spoken to are really, really, are really angry, angry that uh, they were distracted from protesting. And they were not even, they were not even, you know, angry. I was surprised they were not even angry at the, even though they faulted the hoodlums, the suspected hoodlums that distracted the protest. But they were more, you know, they are more interested in commenting on the fact that the government have, is yet to address the needs of the protesters. They claimed that they came out to protest and they were stopped. And they are not just stopped, they were sent back to their homes for a 24-hour coffee for two days, you know, making them, you know, lose uh, some money from their businesses, stay away from their livelihoods. Most of them are into uh, probably uh, transport businesses, tricycle businesses, you know, uh, of course, the motorcycle, commercial motorcyclists, you know, taxi drivers, some of them are farmers, some of them have been denied of going to farm, mm. and we're close to harvest season. So they are very, very unrest, very, very angry. 
and they are not even commenting on the, on the fact that some people have hijacked the protest and that is the reason why they are sent back to their homes to relax you know for peace to reign they are only angry with the fact that they are, the needs of the protesters the needs of nigeria are yet to be met we are going to share with you very disturbing videos of course we will co confirm that from the military there are a lot of accusations that, that, we, that we actually you know that, that we are made that were leveled against the military uh, away from the one we shared on monday that led to the killing of uh, ismail mohammed mm. in samaru the one for this gaskiata magaji usasa is so disturbing the one we got this evening so we're going to you know at, you know monitor those videos speak to the military authorities and show them that you know we have actually found out there are a lot of damages and of course we'll wait for response and then see how we can publish that story so right. the general ambience in zaria is that they are not calm yet they are only calm because they were locked down they are locked down. They want. They are willing. To, they are on standby to protest. All right. The only uh, thing is, the, the only problem they are having is that criminals are going to come into the system, mm. and they want the government to control that. Mm. I mean, uh, th those are really pretty much uh, disturbing details. But uh, let's also talk about uh, the issue of uh, those flying that foreign flag, the Russian flag. Uh, do we have an update on that? Yes, uh, we made a lot of inquiries and asked why uh, they're carrying foreign, uh, foreign flags. I think the reason, uh, uh, the, the story we share about the governor, uh, where the governor, the governor Obasani went, uh, surrounded, the governor made it clear that they have been influenced by our neighbors and our, our French-speaking neighbors. You know, the Northern Nigeria is very, very close to the French-speaking country, Niger, and then, of course, Chad. You know, I know of course those countries are having issues with the with the with of course with France. So so they, they, if you recall Burkina Faso also you can actually get to Burkina Faso of course through the north. So you know you remember the alliance between uh, Burkina Faso and France and, 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 and Russia when they're having issue with France and all that. So that was where the influence was coming from. Mm. You know, most of them travel to Niger, you know, on weekend basis for businesses. So they were, and then, and then of course, it's a free and it's a free West African uh, border movement. So it is the infiltration of and the influence of people from Burkina Faso, Mauritania, Mauritania, France, uh, and then of course Niger and Chad. That is that is the, what you know resulted in you know people carrying Russian flags, you know, to fly. So, and then, of course, it is, it's been suspected that uh, these uh, youths are being sponsored. But generally, the only explanation that uh, uh, Nigerian uh, stakeholders can give to people flying Russian flag is the fact that there are, there, there, there are influences coming in from Burkina Faso, from France, from, France from, from Niger, and then some other French-speaking countries that are neighboring uh, the northern part of Nigeria. All right, Imam No Bagudu, thank you so much for the update. Of course, we'll keep a close eye uh, through you. Thank you once again. Thank you very much, yeah. All right, let me be, uh, bring in Andul uh, Dambature is actually the president for the Arawa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership. Uh, thank you for joining me on the program. Uh, Depo, thanks, thanks for having me. All right, uh, now, uh, Andul, a lot has happened in the past few days, particularly in the northern region uh, as regards these protests. We've seen very unfortunate cases where young persons have lost their lives. There has been quantum destruction of lives and property. And um, I mean, pretty much disturbing. But I, I would like your take, general take, as regards the core objective of the protest itself, which is to address economic hardship uh, and also the reaction of the president on the matter. Your take. Uh, Mr. Depo, uh, you and I know uh, the day of the inauguration, at that very day, uh, Mr. President, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinibu, uh, he announced the removal of swell subsidy. And uh, again, after some few, uh, some few days, uh, another issue came, issue of NERA inflation, and uh, because of uh, those policies by the federal government, uh, it has caused a lot of hardship uh, to the poor masses, uh, most especially uh, at the local level. So we have been appealing uh, to Mr. President uh, uh, with uh, the governors, including the senators, for them to look at into the matter 
so that uh, we, the promises, will have a soft landing for us uh, to enjoy the benefit of democracy in this country. But unfortunately, we have been trying to reach out uh, to the federal government, uh, writing out to them time to time, but no single response. They ignore us, they ignore the promises, and uh, uh, the result of that, uh, you can see how insecurity, kidnapping, killing, crisis, everywhere that is going out uh, in the northern Nigeria. So we decided to, to come out with this peaceful movement uh, so that we can uh, show, show our pain, show, uh, show it to the world how our government had been treating us uh, so that the government will at least listen to us and, and change some of those policies for, the, for our masses uh, to benefit. But very, very unfortunate, uh, uh, some people uh, hijack it uh, and try to spoil it. Or let me say, they spoil uh, the, the, the peaceful protest. Mm. But uh, with that, we, we now uh, watch what the president said. He came out and talked to Nigerian. We agree with some of what he said. Why most of the thing he said there, yeah, we, we disagree with it. Because what he said in, the, in, his, uh, in his speech, uh, he did not mention things that will, will, will benefit the poor masses directly. Whatsoever he's been saying there is, is, the, is, uh, is, is an, a project that will uh, keep on making the rich to be rich while the poor should be getting poorer. Most especially the issue he mentioned, the CNG, the, the, the uh, renewal of housing, this thing. You and I know that a poor, uh, a, a poor woman who is selling tomato in the market cannot afford such houses. It will all end up, governors will end up using that house or using that project for their campaign in 2027. So we want an immediate action okay. from him, immediate and direct contact from him, so that we'll know that he is really serious and he is trying to engage us. All right. Uh, and do let me leave you for a moment. Let me bring in Victor Ani Laju, who is a former presidential candidate of the NNPP. Uh, Victor, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for having me on your program. All right. Good all right, Victor. Now, I mean, uh, you, you, you've had uh, some of the things Andul said. I would like your reaction as regards uh, the objective of the protest and if at all uh, you feel that it has driven on the point. Well, the truth about it is that uh, we all agree that as of today, uh, the Nigerian people are not happy. We are facing hardship. We are facing insecurity. We are facing low uh, level of unemployment. Our unemployment rate in the world now is, we are among the youth, is the highest. The policies of the current administration have brought hardship to Nigerians across board, from north to south, east to west. Everybody are complaining and crying. The business people, business is not booming as usual. Investors are pulling out from the country. Even the investors that was planning to come into the country are refusing to come in with their money. We could see even the richest man in Africa is even crying for, for help because Nigeria's economy is going down the drain. I am in Lagos. I know how Lagos used to be bubbling. Today is Friday. There is no traffic anywhere because people hardly come out. People hardly go about uh, having their weekend, enjoying their weekend. So as we speak right now, just like, just like what he said, the, and secondly, the president, what he's saying, eh, can you believe that you cannot hold a figure or a location from what the president just said? Let's look at the, what he said about family. He didn't tell us where, what states. Are you going to, this, where, where will this farm be located? Is he in Sokoto? 
Is he in Katsina? Is he in Borno? Or is he in a Do State? Or is he in Lagos State? No, he just gave us broad and open end uh, hope. You are not even telling us, okay, I'm commanding this state, this state, this state, this state to turn to, to become our agricultural zone. I'm using the South South, no figure, nothing. It, to me, I, I, it, it's like we don't have a president. Mm. We don't have somebody occupying the presidency. Because right now, Nigerians are hopeless. We don't even know where the country is going to. We don't even know what figure to hold on to. Right? We'll be hearing about that hotel refinery, that hotel refinery. It came as a hope for us. But to speak right now, the refinery project is down. Okay, as every Nigerian, let's say it the way it is. If we need help today, where can we go to? You can't go to the hospital and you are treated for free. You can't even go to the police station to write statements and you write statements for free. There is no free education. There is no free health care. There is no free transportation. Everything about how the country right now has been monetized. And there is no money to even to even get those things. Food are very expensive. Housing are very expensive. Transportation is very, very expensive. I'm just clothing is very so what what is this about this country now? Okay, we are enjoying. Okay, if you remove subsidy from the petroleum product, why don't you put some subsidy to the food? As big as America is today, America subsidizes the food. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. As uh, big as China, China still subsidizes their education. All right, Victor. Right now, right now, an average student in, in university now is being asked to pay eighty thousand for electricity bill. That's the new one. Apart from the tutorial and something that they have in the school fees. So very soon, every uh, every student in, in Nigeria, universities, especially for federal universities, they will be paying an additional eighty thousand for electricity. I mean, but the but but, but the presidency also now. said that there is uh, the option of the student loan. What is loan? Who gives student loan? As well as America, America is giving, is giving grants. It should tell us about that. And how much is the loan? You are giving the entire student in Nigeria today forty billion naira as, as loan. Like I don't understand how 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 the president and the cabinet member how what do they think they should give that loan. To the rich and give grants to the poor. Mm. There are many rich people today that are looking for loan. All right. Uh, let, Is it a poor person let, who wants to come and pay? Let them? me leave you. Let, let, let me leave you for a moment, Victor. Let me go back to Andul. Andul, we saw a lot happen in the northern part. Unfortunately, uh, in s many parts of the north, we saw violence erupt and you know rift between uh, men in uniform. I'm talking about the policemen and civilians. I, I would like you to particularly speak on that, uh, the issue of violence, uh, abuses, the issue of uh, uh, killings that you know, really happened there. I mean, you represent a, a youth group. Uh, you are also very much involved in the, the protest. What actually went wrong? Yes. Uh, Mr. Depo, let me, let, me, let, me tell you, let me tell you something. We, we started uh, this issue of nationwide protest last two months ago. And this is the first time I think Nigerian came out. We came out and informed the government the date and time that we will uh, start uh, this protest. So, so we are known. And because we want it to be peaceful, uh, uh, this is our country. We are the youth that obey the rules and regulations of this country. We respect our constitution so much. That was the reason why we came openly to announce and inform the federal uh, government uh, about this protest. And let me let me tell you something. We, the youth of uh, Northern Nigerian youth, let me speak on behalf of the youth as the leader. Uh, the Northern Nigerian youth are the most patient. When I said patient, we are the most patient youth in Nigeria, or let me say in Africa, because a lot of things has been happening in the north, in which I know uh, you are aware. There's been killing, killing every day by uh, 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 terrorists in the north. And this killing uh, is uh, youth for youth. When I mean is youth for youth, the military that, uh, the, the military or the soldiers that sometimes the terrorists kill a youth 
why uh, 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 the, 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 the terrorists that were also being killed are youth? Why the cities, innocent citizens that were also being killed most of the times are youth? And let me come again. Did you, are we aware of the killing of Kawiyambiri? There is a village in Kaduna where uh, 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 military, uh, death, according to them, allegedly, they said uh, it was a mistake. Over 2,000 people we had died. We were dead. they killed almost two thousand people in that uh, 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 in that uh, 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 they, uh, what they say what they call a mistake uh, uh, operation. But mm. we keep silent because we we know whatsoever that is happening, and whenever they say that uh, uh, an issue happened that is a mistake, it can happen to everybody. We we write to them. We are expecting at least let's see a reaction from from them, but. We did not see something uh, uh, like that. So when we, when this issue of uh, protest now, now, now came out, we came out peacefully, peacefully to demonstrate. We do that, and uh, 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 we did our protest and we sent our message to the federal government. And our message get to the government at the at the right time. Uh, uh, and I am sure the the president. Uh, is ready to call for the dialogue, and we accept his call. We are also ready for the dialogue. You, 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 I'm, sorry, I, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We, we need to go. Issue of the okay. issue of the hoodlums. Ish, issue of the hoodlums. Or let me say, some of the people that are carrying flat or those that are busy looting properties. You know. You know. Oh. In every gathering, there is bad eggs. Seriously, they are not part of us, and we are not part of them. Do you have any idea the where they are from? Says, any idea where they are from? Yes, they are Nigerians. You and I know they are Nigerians, and the security agencies, the security agencies know them because the video is everywhere. Okay. Oh, they are not part of us. We disassociate ourselves. Between we and those people. Okay, and do, and do. I'm sorry. I'm... Of, of Russia. This is the only thing I have. This is the only thing we have, and this is uh, what we use in our protest. Anything that has to do with the uh, with the flood of Russia is not part of us, and we condemn it and we disassociate ourselves mm. from those people that are carrying that flood. All right, uh, and do. I understand that we need to go on a break. When we return, of course, we will pick up. Uh, from this particular conversation. Do stay with us. You're still watching Politics HQ on New Central Television. And of course, I still have my guest with me, uh, Andul Dambature. He is the president of the Arawa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership, and Victor Anilaju, a former presidential candidate of the NNPP. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with me. All right. Now, um, let me come back to you, Victor. Let's look at some of the specifics uh, in the president's speech. The president uh, talked about the fact that he has given uh, states, the 36 states, about uh, 570 billion naira, you know, to sort of cushion the hardship in those states. The president also talked about loans, uh, grants, not just for students, also for small businesses and even businesses generally. The president also talked about uh, some you know, uh, uh, policy initiatives uh, that uh, should drive food production uh, and also address the issue of food scarcity, one of which is the uh, suspension on import duties on essentials like food items. I, I mean, these are some of the specifics in that speech that the president you know, felt might address some of the ongoing hardship that Nigerians are facing. I'd like you to uh, particularly react to them, uh, even though the same administration is, say, is telling Nigerians, please be patient with us for all of these pos uh, policies to yield fruit. Your take. Well, it's, it's, it's shameful that um, we, that is coming from presidency. If it was the local government chairman, that is uh, behaving like that, I would have um, 
Are you saying are you saying the speech time. is completely out of touch? Completely. Totally. Totally. Because what we need now, we need an immediate solution. Mm. It need an immediate What do you consider the immediate solution? Well, mm. one of the immediate solutions would have been uh, the president turning all the local governments to become like a food food bank. All the local government secretariat, you make them become food bank where people go there and buy food at a discounted price. So that that's that's immediate solution. That tells you that the, the, the presidency are not in control of the economy. They are just running fire brigade economy. They don't even have touch with the grassroots. You know, when you hear people talk about politics, they, they talk as if maybe they, they are the god of, of politics. That is where I always tell them during my campaign that I am not a politician. I'm a leader. That's the difference between a politician and a leader. A leader leads the people, is in touch with the people. But politicians know how to, how to do all these gimmicks. So if you follow the president's speech, to me, it's just a game. He just gave a speech that you cannot hold him accountable for. But, 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 but he again... He tell us... Mm. But, but but again, yeah, I'm, so, I'm I'm so, I'm sorry to mm. interrupt you. But don't you also think mm. that um, there's so much focus on what the federal arm of government is doing, and little or no focus, you know, at the state level or even the local government level? The truth about it is that the head is what leads the body. So if the federal federal government, has, the president has that today, cannot come out with a a clear cut direction. What I mean, clear cut direction, direction that has numbers, that has figures, that have if we are going right or we are going left, that have instructions to say, okay, let me say for example, that if the president announced that, that uh, uh, on federal level we are opening up food bank, go to every local government council and buy food as so as at so so rates, that would have would be easy. Now the federal government have network amongst. The markets, if you don't know, Asiwaju has network that runs within the markets, that, which the daughter is one of the coordinators, especially in, in the southwest. The daughter is seen as the head of all, all markets in the southwest. And you, can, you cannot use her to do some of this stuff. And if you want to know, Asiwaju is one of the importers of rice into this country. He has been doing that for over 40 years now. So if anybody asks you to, who is giving them permission, tell, tell them it's me. So he knows what to do. That's just our pain. This is the man that came with the matter that he had been in politics politician for over 40 years. So he understands the people. Fortunately for us, that he came into power, he started making decisions that is anti-people. How can you, only you, between the space of three months, you increase fuel. You, you you increase school fees. You 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 uh, you increase uh, electricity tariff. Mm. So what are you subsidizing for the people? There is no economy that is doing well today that is not subsidizing one item or the other for the people. You are not subsidizing light. You are not subsidizing school fees. You are not subsidizing uh, uh, fuel. You are not even subsidizing health. You are not subsidizing transportation. So how do you want us to cope? You are leading a country that you know we are the second poorest nation on earth. And you are doing all of this. And you say people should not be corrupt. And you are saying they should not be in insecurity. You are saying they should, they should not be violent. You are saying people should go home. Go home to go and do what now? Go home to sit hungry or go home to start looking at the television where there is no light. As I'm speaking with you right now, there is no light here in Lagos. I, I'm, I'm just using my own uh, uh, techniques to devise light for myself. So uh, you can't run business. You can't do business with, without power. Uh, uh, so uh, all right, what do you want to say? You are not building factory for us to, to, to be employed. And, and especially just like what my brother said, this whole thing is affecting the youth. It's affecting us crazily. There is no hope on any side. You want to go to school, you can't go to school. You want to even learn work. Most of the people who are doing hand work are not doing it because there is no light. And we have our life to live. We are young people. We need to use our energy now. And the president is not doing anything about us. For me, Nigeria don't have a president as you speak. 
We just have somebody or some persons occupying the presidency and eating the money that belongs to the people. All for right, us, Victor. Right, let let, let me leave you for a moment because we're pressed for time. Uh, Victor, thank you. Let, 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 me get, let me bring in um, Andul into all of this. Andul, you said that um, your, your group uh, is willing to explore uh, the avenue of dialogue. You know, uh, because in, that, in the president's speech, yes. he said he's open to dialogue and conversations on uh, matters, particularly that affect Nigerians. Now, uh, what specific issues uh, might you be discussing should that avenue uh, arise? Oh, you see, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we are, we are good citizens who obey uh, the rules and regulations. Uh, what we expect from the uh, president, or let me say the federal government, not only the president alone, this dialogue, we are going to do it, including the state governors. Our state coordinators, our state coordinators will also engage their state coordinators. They are, sorry, they, are, they, are, they, will, they will engage their governors. While our local government coordinators will engage their, their local government chairman in a dialogue, why we, the leaders of the group here at the national level, will engage the president? Because we don't want this issue to rely only in the center. The problem of this country is not just direct from the president. This issue started from at the local level. And who are the people that are closer to the people? Uh, uh, who are the uh, leaders that are closer to the people at the local level are the governors. So you see, governors are the major problem of this this country. But most of our uh, our citizens don't know. Most of our youth don't know. They are not holding their governors accountable for that. But this time around, we thank God for the protest. It has opened our eyes, and we know that. They are our problem because, as I'm telling you, after increasing the fuel, uh, uh, removing the fuel subsidy, uh, uh, all the, gener uh, the revenue that the federal government generates, it has increased. And this money has been shared between the, the, the federal government, the state government, and the local government. So what are the state government doing with their own money? If they are, if they are, they, are, they, they were, if they use that money at the right channel, the insecurity, hardship, hunger, everything it wouldn't have been have been there. And most of the people don't know. All we keep on doing is that pressurizing the present, the present. Although the present has his own blame, we all know that he has his own blame. That was the reason why we will engage the president, while our state coordinators will now engage their state governors. Let me come, uh, uh, let me answer what, uh, what you asked me. Part of the thing we write to the governor, to the president, and uh, we bring it out uh, in our demand from the dialogue, first and foremost is removing the fuel subsidy. We want the fuel subsidy should be removed. Or if the fuel subsidy cannot be removed, all we want is that. The, the subsidy, the subsidy fuel, according to the president, is removed. So, uh, are no, you sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah. We want him. We want him to return it. Okay. Sorry. Let him return it. Uh, yes. Because if he cannot return it, all we want is that we want Nigerian citizens should buy what belong to them at the cheap, at, at, at the at the cheap rate. Well, well, should come back to one hundred and fifty letters, one seventy. That's that 170 think, Naira per liter. Nigerian Are you talking Nigeria about Accord. Naira per liter, right? Yes. Naira per liter. We shouldn't default a Naira, Naira per liter. Uh, uh, 170 or 150 per liter. Per one liter. Because this fuel belongs to us. Mm. It belongs to Nigerians. So why is it that what belongs to us, we are finding it very difficult to have it. If really they are doing it for the masses, it should come back to the cheap rate so that it will be very easy for people to use it, uh, 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 to buy it, uh, uh, to buy it and use it. And by the time we start buying it at the cheap rate, you see issue of transportation. A lot of things will come down because you and I know fuel price determine the high price of everything in this country. 
as I'm telling you. So whenever the fuel price come down, at least the stress, the hunger, the everything will now come will now come down. Secondly, uh, 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 we want the Mr. President should please, please let him relocate our our our, our security uh, uh, chief of defense staff, chief of army staff. Chief of Nava staff, Inspector General of Police, let him relocate them to the northeast where there is insecurity. We don't want them, they should be busy sleeping in Abuja with AC. Why uh, 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 terrorists, or let me say bandits, will be uh, 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 in the forest doing whatsoever they want, controlling this, uh, controlling uh, uh, some part of the, uh, uh, some part of our, uh, uh, our let me say, uh, uh, country. Because bandit has been doing anyhow they want it in the north. So let them relocate all the service chief. We want all the service chief should be relocated to north to, to, to north northwest. Then thirdly, uh, you see uh, this issue of uh, uh, agriculture. The agriculture, the agricultural, let me say agriculture uh, 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 in this country is is one of the the, the, the major thing that if the president can work on it very well, it will it will reduce the hardship of this country. But the issue now is the government, the president don't have representative. What I mean, he doesn't have representative. His cabinet are not there to work with him. His cabinet, they were just busy, busy preparing for their 2027 campaign. But 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 every but every but every every local government every word every region has a representatives at the House of Reps and even Senate. Yes. How about engaging with them too? Yes, yes, they have, they have. But what I'm trying to tell you now is the president appoint his own people. He did not appointed people that would be there to represent the people, the masses. The people he appoint there they are not the people that are there to represent the masses. Not all of them. Some few part of them. They were not there to represent the masses. They were there to represent their pocket and for them to prepare for 2027. If not, you cannot be a minister and you are not working for the people. Whereby you will be busy doing eye service for the president and the masses are, are suffering. The masses are dying every by, day by day. So some of the ministers you see are the are the reasons why uh, we are facing this uh, this problem. So issue of agriculture. The agriculture is not getting the agriculture empowerment or let me say system is not getting to the to the masses directly to the farmers directly. The uh, politicians are the one busy sharing everything uh, uh, to. Themselves. All right, Ando. Um, I, I mean, we'll come back to uh, some of the issues that you hope to dialogue with, you know, uh, with the presidency. But right now, let's go on a quick break. When we return, we'll pick up. Do stay with us. This is still Politics HQ on New Central Television. And of course, I still have my uh, guest with me is the speaker, sorry, president of the Arawa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership is uh, Andul Dambature, and also Victor Ani Lajo, the former presidential candidate of the NNPP. Of course, we are discussing matters arising around the end bad governance protest, which uh, should elapse tomorrow. Now, um, my question goes to you, Victor. Um, in the president's speech, he gave an open window for dialogue. Uh, for some individuals, they are saying, you know what? Uh, Dialogue, that's a way to go, while for others are saying, you know what, we will not explore that option. It wouldn't change anything. My question to you is this. Do you think that uh, that open window would actually uh, make some sort of substantive impact on the issues on ground? And have we seen the last of this protest? No, this is just the beginning of the protest. Nigerians are not going to back down if there is no immediate uh, solution to hunger, to insecurity, to unemployment, and to uh, human rights. Nigerians are not going to back down. That I know for sure. 
So we are even trying to help the nation from going into a place of disaster. In fact, the uh, Asiwaju Bola Ahmed should we will be thanking the youth for trying to help him. Because very soon, it will be the military and the police that will even attack the system. Because I, I, I can tell you as we speak right now, that there's a lot of officers that I know that are complaining. Some of them, their salary is being slashed into two. Some of them, they are supposed to be promoted, they are not getting the promotion. Majority of them cannot even pay their children's school fees or pay house rent. So uh, I think the people around the president is not telling the president the honest truth. If he can listen, if Bola Mertinibu can listen to the people, especially the Nigerian youth, he will just help himself and maintain what he has uh, achieved so far by occupying that seat of, of being the president. But if he fails to listen to what the Nigerian youth are demanding from him, that means he is calling for anarchy. Because, like I asked you, or like I've told you, there is no hope in the country. There is nowhere we can go to. There is no hope anywhere. There is no food anywhere. There is no job anywhere. And uh, when the people are hungry, they will come after you. I hear you about the governors, but the truth about it is that the president stands as the father of the entire country. If he has meetings with the governors frequently, even the head or even the head of service, if the president wants to meet any person in this country, he can call the person. He had meeting with the traditional rulers recently. So I think he has everything that he needs to solve this problem. If the governors are not doing well, call a meeting and discuss with them. But me, I'm not expecting much from the governors right now because the president ought to give direction. If the president cannot give us a clear-cut direction, I do not expect anything different from the governors. There are some governors that are doing well, like the governors in, in Abdiya State. But you cannot compare just one Abdiya State to the entire uh, 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 36 states and uh, Abuja. So the ball still falls on, on the, 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 the president, which he acknowledged. But I'm so shocked that the president doesn't know what to do. If you don't know what to do, consult people like me. I have an agenda of help. And help, our first agenda is to create a hunger-free nation. Uh, well, Victor, let, sure let me... All the land in the north is used for agricultural uh, 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 products. All right. It's used v for cultivation. Victor, let me leave you for a moment. So let me go back to Andu. Andu, you... you said uh, a few things that uh, you, if you have the, uh, your group has the opportunity to uh, dialogue with the presidency, you'd bring forward. But I didn't hear you talk about education. No, you know, I did not uh, 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 finish uh, mentioning our demand when you caught me up. Uh, not, not, only, not only education, uh, some of the things we demand uh, food on the the, the president is that we we want federal government should stop paying uh, 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 old governors or let me say paying pensions to to old politicians those who have retired because when when federal government said there is no money in the country that means uh, uh, the country is poor so we cannot live in a country where there is no money and the old cabas, those that hijack and put the country in their pocket, they were being paid every month while the poor masses were left with, with, with hunger. Then, uh, uh, lastly, you know, uh, issue of this education you mentioned. I think uh, education uh, is one of the major aspects we don't joke with it in the north when it comes to education. We don't joke with it in the north. We take it so seriously. But because of the issue of insecurity, the issue of insecurity, it has affected the impact of education in the north. So we still appeal to, to the president. He is, he is a father of the nation. Uh, he can do something uh, about it. And is that uh, uh, issue of education is part of our demand. Then, uh, uh, therefore, uh, lastly, 
issue of young people getting involved in governance. That is youth in governance. If you and I know uh, our politicians only engage the youth during politics, during politics, during campaign, we play the major role for this government to come on board. We play the major role. We are the majority people that work for the politicians, or let me say for this government to come on board. But we are expecting the president to carry the youth alone. But as I'm talking to you, there is no single <coughs> youth representative from the north who is a minister. Okay, so I, are you Make talking? Uh, but, okay, by, by young person now, because I, I, I mean, we also know that this administration has a lot of young people scattered with uh, political, you know, positions and appointment, uh, both from agencies from as aides. So the issue right now is no. No, no young person, not at all, from the north? Is that what you're saying? What I mean, no young person as a minister from the north. There's no young person from the, no single person that is young person from, that's a senior minister from the north. But really? We, this is one of the major things we're expecting to get or to have from the president. Because... They keep on saying, we are the leaders. We are the leaders. The youth are the leaders. So when are we going to be the leaders? And as the, the president, as the leaders of Renewal Hope, we hope as he is coming, he is coming to refine everything. He is coming to make the change. But after everything, we did not see a single change. It's one of the, uh, 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 this major aspect is one of our demand that we also want to have youth to be part of this government all right um i mean you you said quite a, a number of things there um, you you talked about uh having people from northern extraction in appointments but there are quite a few of them you know highly represented in this current administration maybe you are talking about the, the number being increased is it as is it they, are, they were represented as youth as as, as the ministers or as aid to the president. You let me know, please. Please, the, please. No, I'm asking you, apart which which, minister, which are you particular from, about? Yes, sorry, as, as ministers sorry. or as aid? Apart from minister, apart from minister of youth. Aha, uh -huh, because I was going youth, there. Please. Yes, Continue. I'm telling you, apart from minister of youth, uh -huh. who is from the north? Who is? Who is? We are expecting to see places like Ministry of Agriculture, we are expecting to see places that Ministry of Education, those places should be occupied by young people, by vibrant young people who are ready to serve this country, not okay. military politicians, not former senators, not former this, former that. We are not mm. after such kind of things. We want fresh and young people, those who are ready to serve this country. All right. Uh, gentlemen, I understand that we are pressed for time and we need to go. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of today's show. Well, uh, of course, we've been discussing with uh, uh, Andul Dambature, he's a, uh, president of the Arewa Youth Assembly for Good Leadership, and Victor Ani Lajo, former presidential candidate of the NNPP. Once again, gentlemen, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you very me. much, Depo Adebo, for having me. All right. Great. And that's a wrap on today's show. In case you missed out, you might want to, of course, uh, look it up on our YouTube platform. That's News Central TV. You can also follow us across social media with the same name, News Central TV. My name is Dakwa Adigboye. You can follow me across equally with the same name, Dakwa Adigboye. Until I come your way, be a good citizen. Bye for now.